In this video I'll show you how to replace or upgrade your Xbox 360 controller joysticks. You'll need the following tools. A Torx T9 screwdriver. While not necessary, something to help you keep the board in place. Some tweezers and a precision knife might come in handy. Many cotton buds and a toothbrush. Just don't use the toothbrush on your teeth after this. Some soldering wick to help with the desoldering. Optional, but still good to have, is a solder sucker. Solder wire to help install the new joysticks. Flux to help the soldering and desoldering process. A prying tool to help get the controller open. It can help to have different prying tools at your disposal. An adjustable soldering iron is a must. 99% isopropyl alcohol for cleaning. A fume extractor for keeping you healthy and a microscope to see exactly what you're doing. Start by removing this sticker that has a screw underneath it. If you don't want to damage the sticker, I suggest using a hairdryer to soften the glue, else you can just start scraping the sticker away. Next, there are 7 torque screws that need to be removed before we can open the controller up. After the screws are out, we can start opening up the case. If you want, this is where prying tools might come in handy. Keep in mind not to use metal, since that can damage the plastic. When the back is off, we want to focus our attention to the rumble motors and disconnect them from the board. Now that the board is free, we can take it out from the front housing as well. Don't forget to take off the thumbstick caps from the joystick. These are the joysticks we'll be taking off and replacing with new ones. As you may have noticed, one of the trigger buttons is in the way of the points we need to desolder, so we'll have to take that off first by desoldering a component. At this point, it can be a good idea to get your microscope ready and put the board in something that will hold it steady. Now is the time to start your fume extractor. Be sure to keep it near the board so it actually extracts the fumes. I set my soldering station to 400 degrees Celsius or 800 degrees Fahrenheit. Try putting your soldering tip on the pin and the solder blob. Wait for the solder to liquefy. Here, the microscope helps immensely. Put the solder sucker as close as possible, hold steady, and let it do its thing. Don't be afraid to do this a couple of times until you're satisfied that you've gotten all the solder and you have a clean hole. When you've gotten all the solder off the three points, we need to gently pry off the plastic holding the bumper in place. Be sure that all the solder has been removed so we don't damage the board. If you need to use force to get the component off, it might be good to inspect if all the solder is actually gone. If you've done it correctly, this is how the component should get out. Thank you. 
Now that that is off, we finally have access to all the points we need to desolder. The joysticks have a couple of anchor points that can take more heat than the smaller points we did previously. Have patience with these, they will eventually liquefy. If you prefer to use solder wick instead of the solder sucker, make sure to add flux on the points you want to desolder. Don't try to reuse already used unclean wick since unclean wick doesn't absorb solder as well as clean wick. We use flux to help the solder flow, both with the desoldering with the soldering wick and for soldering. As I said before, these anchor points need a lot of heat. Add solder wick to that and it will require even more heat. Don't be impatient and increase the temperature if not absolutely necessary. Give the solder pen some time to do its job. When using flux and some solder, be sure to use isopropyl alcohol after you've done the desoldering and clean it off with a cotton bud or a toothbrush. We don't want old flux residue to stay on the board. If the anchor points scared you away from the solder wick, don't worry, these smaller points show how great solder wick actually is. After you're done with getting all the solder off all the points of the joystick, be sure to clean up the area thoroughly one extra time. If you've done everything successfully up to this point, you should be able to take off the desoldered joysticks. Be sure to take your time and not to use too much force. Also, make sure all the holes are empty and have no solder. It's now time to put the new joysticks in place. Complete one before moving on to the other. Make sure that all pins have gone through to the other side. If not, some of them might have been bent. Simply bend them back to their correct position and try again. Now it's time to solder the new joysticks in place. Start with an anchor point by putting some flux on it. Tin the soldering tip with some solder, tap the pin on the joystick. Clean the flux off with isopropyl alcohol as you go. Letting the flux cool down will only make it harder for you to get it off. When you've done the first anchor point, the joystick should be firmly in place. Continue soldering on the other pins. As you can see here, I've used too little solder. If this happens to you, add a bit more solder to your soldering tip and re-tap it. Here, I've accidentally made a solder bridge, meaning two points that shouldn't be connected, are connected. If this happens to you, make sure you have plenty of flux and tap one of the points. If the problem still persists, you've added too much solder. 
In that case, use soldering wick or a solder sucker to remove that solder. Redo the joints if necessary. Here we can see how a completed solder job looks like. Don't forget to clean the area one more time when you're done. Redo these steps for the other joystick. After soldering the two joystick in place, don't forget to reattach the thumbstick caps. Put the board back in the front housing. Reattach the vibration motors. Get the back housing on and fasten all 7 screws. You're done! Happy gaming! If you enjoyed this tutorial, let me know in the comments below. I'd appreciate a like and a subscribe. Take care.